Hey, sports fans, Coach Nick here, and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown, another live show every Wednesday coming at you. And this every Wednesday, we're going to do a really cool thing where we break down some X's and O's, and I get really in-depth with how these things work, how the offenses are, are have started. I'm going to do that tonight. Uh, and other options you can run out of these things. Give you a different perspective. Give you more of a coaching perspective. And either you're a coach and you want to, you know, hear some other points of view, or you're a player who wants to learn more about the X's and O's, or even just a fan who wants to just improve your knowledge of the game. I am here for you, and I'm looking forward to having a conversation because I know that people are going to recommend some interesting things in the comments as well. And I want to like have at it and get all crazy on everybody. So. Um, what do you say? How's everybody doing? Let's just go quickly check and uh, look through the stream here and um, and see what's going on here. So, anybody? Where's everybody from right now? Uh, will be a, a live on trade. I don't know what that means. Um, this will oh oh uh, trades. Uh, we could talk maybe at the end about some trades if you want to. Nothing happened recently, but we'll I can go over some stuff and give you some ideas. Um, what's up? Kanye West is in the chat. Always great to see you, Kanye. Easy. Um, what is my coaching history? Thanos wants to know. From Australia, Cali, LA, nice, down the street from me probably. Wow, from everywhere. Em uh, Boston, Illinois, Empire State would be New York. Very nice. Uh, Saudi Arabia, wow. Bangladesh, amazing. This is, by the way, I, you know, who, what other time in our history could we do this where we'd have a, a virtual, you know, Zoom basically with uh, people from all around the world talking basketball? Love it. Melbourne, Australia, very nice. Um, you guys are safe there. I'll tell you that. We ain't safe where I am right now. Um, okay. So let's keep, keep the grinding up. We want to hear about my coaching background. Uh, yeah, I was a high school basketball coach for a while. Um, I coached like a big high school here in LA. Um, I was a basketball manager at University of Wisconsin. So my boss at that time was Stu Jackson and the assistant was, uh, Stan Van Gundy, who's in the news these days. And also, um, who else? I used to play a one-on-one -on -one every day after practice with Sean Miller, who's over at Arizona. So that's always fun. And then James Whitford, who was the head manager for me, is now the head coach. Or he's not, not now. He's been the head coach at, um, oh, my goodness, where is Whitford? He's been in a couple different places. But um, I don't even know. Somebody know. Anyone know college basketball, where he is right now? Uh, we can look it up, I guess. If we can. I don't want to disrespect James. Um, he is a, the coach of... Uh, Ball State. That's right. Ball State. So anyhow, um, and uh, Michael Finley was on that team. So I got a chance to watch him for a couple of years and be impressed with what he could do. Uh, and anyway, so and then you know I've been doing this for 10 years and it's given me opportunities to connect with coaches from all around the world um, and, and really just learn uh, and just be a, a, um, a receptacle just to con continually expand my coaching knowledge so I can give it back to you guys. Um, which actually is interesting because Martin, great on, wait, wait to see you catching the stream. Um, so I was a triangle offense coach and I want to give credit to Al Bennett, who was my mentor. I was an assistant for him at the big high school in LA. Then I took over later, uh, that program. Uh, he let me bring in the triangle offense because I had grown up in Chicago watching the bulls and, you know, if going all the games, you kind of got a sense of what the triangle was. So I sort of knew it, but then when he, when I got hired by him and he was looking for a new offense, I kind of said, you know, you should look at the triangle. I think it'd be really good. And he was like, eh, whatever. But it was right when um, Phil Jackson had taken over the Lakers. So all of a sudden, you know, every other night on local TV, my Coach Bennett and, and I, we, we could watch the Lakers games and he couldn't believe what he was seeing with the triangle offense. So we got the book from Tex Winter. And then next thing you know, we go down the next summer to a summer league, which used to be in Long Beach at the Pyramid. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we look like we're coaches. We're dressed in our, you know, coaching gear with our clipboard. And I go down on the floor because there was no security back then. And we literally, like, grabbed Tex Winter, who, you know, was the Bulls and Lakers assistant coach who invented the darn offense. And uh, basically just became friendly with him. I became a friend with him. I visited with him a lot, spent hours and hours going through the offense and understanding how it worked from the guy himself. It was amazing. Um, so that's actually very uh, appropriate to what we're going to talk about tonight because uh, the triangle offense being near and near to my heart has a lot of actions built into it as an automatic that we see today. 
So we might not see the very traditional, you know, sideline triangle, which I understand why it's a little bit too slow and the spacing is a little bit different than what you'd want in a modern offense. But so many of the actions out of uh, the triangle are so applicable and so um, worthwhile running. And we see all these teams doing it all the time uh, that it's exciting to know that he, what he built actually was really valuable and will last as long as the game lasts. So I had the, the, a real, um, just a fortunate opportunity to show you how nice Tex Winter is. You know, he just opened up his, his basketball world to me and let me uh, spend some time with him, a lot of time with him in learning. So um, I'm, I'm really excited. So here's the thing. Hey, I'm a freshman from a small town in Texas, and I'm trying to make it big. Uh, no, no problem, Hector. Uh, anything I can do, uh, I, I'm here for you. Uh, the James Harden situation is the uncoachable. So it's an interesting question. Uh, really quickly, I don't want to get off topic, but um, yeah, it, the question here is it got so toxic they had to get rid of Russell Westbrook right away. Um, and then here's a chicken and egg. Was it Russ? Was it Harden? Was it Russ and Harden? Clearly CP3 and Harden didn't get, didn't get along. And so basically if, like, if you have five bad roommates, if you always are complaining that you uh, have bad roommates – and it happens like three times in a row, then you're the bad roommate. And so that might be what's going on. Um, you know, but by the way, he's been there for a while. They've given it the old college try. It hasn't worked out. So I don't blame Harden for being like, I just want to change the scenery. And so, you know, that's not bad. He, you know, he's the right to do that. I think, you know, absconding for a few days to, uh, and then now having to sit through having to get six positive tests in a row before he can get on the court is not the best way to do it. But I understand, uh, why he'd want a, um, another, uh, Another scenery. Uh, Roberto Mizell is telling us, that, uh, oh, Coach Cohn just won another championship in the Philippine League. I got to get through. I'm going to get some games. I'll try and get one you know, before the season starts if I can't break one down. Because uh, I, I have a feeling he's not running the exact pure triangle offense anymore. I feel like they were talking about that. And by the way, Tim Cohn and I are friends. Uh, and we're out of the triangle you know, brotherhood. There's not many of us left. Um, so anyhow, let's get into the pistol. So first of all, we're going to start with the history of the pistol, which goes back a long, long, long time. And why I brought up Tex Winter in the triangle is because pistol action is built into the triangle offense in the second option pinch post. So I'm going to show you the triangle offense, and then I'm going to show you how where the pistol comes in, and then we can kind of extrapolate from there how it became more modernized into what we see today. So um, let's see here. Let me uh, cut to, oh, excuse me, I have to cut to my other screen. Forgive me. Um, here we go. So I'm going to cut to the other screen. Now, remember, this is from Lucio Sports, and they're the ones who provide this kind of a technology to NBA teams. And in the huddles, they literally have these plays all ready to go. Now, the triangle has a lot of action, so you can see it's a little bit muddled right now when you're trying to follow along. But it's going to animate in a second, and you'll see why it's really worthwhile. Um, and uh, I'm going to show it to you. So really quickly, um, I'm going to hit play. Here we go. So the first version is we set the triangle up on the right side. So, it, as we can see here, I'm going to, let's see if I can mark this up. We have a triangle set up here. Okay, there's a sideline triangle. Now, there's triangles all over the place. You can draw, draw triangles between three players all over, in any offense, really. But there's the, the main triangle. And obviously, the first look in this offense is to the five down low in the post. Uh, you know, it's a throwback, old school kind of thing, right? So, um, if you don't get it to the post... Uh, down low, and in the NBA, you know, a lot of times the defender will play behind the five. It's not such a hard pass to make. Um, you look for the two out top, and this is where we're going to get pinch post, okay? So let me go back, and we're going to animate again. So you're going to see this is the pass that's going to go. We actually, the pass kind of already happened after I stopped, but you'll see this pass. So let's go back to um, the actual play. Okay, so here we go. Now, when the ball is thrown to the two on top, that triggers the four to hit the, the pinch post. So this whole area pretty much here is the pinch post right in here. Okay, that's the pinch post. So anywhere he catches it around here. Now, the modern version of pinch post we see a lot of is the two throws the ball here to the four, and then he'll follow his pass around and look for that pass uh, handoff back. And you'll see like Draymond Green do like the fake handoff and then start dribbling. I'm going to show you that in a second. That's very powerful because when you're only when you're near the elbow, um, you're close to the basket. The defense has a lot of pressure on them to stop this. So you can see how this is going to flow to the left side. Now, we haven't talked about what's going on on the right side yet, but I want to go through this the main part here. So basically what happens is the two now follows his pass. Four is going to fake it to him. Obviously, if two is open, he'd give it right back to him. Two could go to the basket, four rolls with him, and they can get an easy shot. But two will then loosen up to the corner. Now, four on this 
fake handoff, then starts to do a dribble handoff across the top. That's why the squiggly line toward the elbow is. And what you're going to see is he's going to hand it off to one coming out of the corner. Now one gets that handoff here, and now it turns the corner, gets into the lane, four rolls, and then he can hit two for the corner of three. Now, when you watch the triangle play out like this all the way through, because obviously there's a ton of shots in between that you might get, um, you know, off of passes to, for shots, um, they all end up with a corner three. Okay, so the triangle offense really is designed when you run it all the way through to get threes and to get corner threes. And it was never a thing where you didn't get threes out of the out of the offense. It allowed if you were a three point shooter to beat the three point line versus eighteen feet or whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, and it always allowed for the op- opportunity to penetrate the defense and then kick out for those shots. So that was never really the issue. There's there are some things we could talk about about why the triangle kind of died and didn't get. Uh, you know, didn't continue. Now, one of the reasons is because if you look at like the attempt at the triangle offense across the league uh, outside of Tex Winter and Phil Jackson, it never really worked. And one of the reasons I believe is because Tex Winter wasn't there. It worked when Tex was there. He invented the offense and Phil Jackson allowed him to basically run it on his own, which is re- really a, a testament to how, uh, how much respect Phil had for Tex. Um, and so, the thing was, the attention to detail is really important. And at the NBA level, with a lot of coaches don't have that at all. You'd be surprised. They really don't see the details like that. Um, and they might not feel like they have time to install it, which is why with the Lakers, we saw Phil bring in a lot of the old Bulls players to kind of like act as a bridge to help everybody along a little bit quicker. But I believe, uh, you know, if you know how to teach this properly like Tex did, you can get this thing installed in a typical NBA season and get it to run fine. You know, guys like Gary Payton came in on that 2004 year with the Lakers and never figured it out. Uh, and Tex was there. So, you know, it's, it's every once in a while it kind of happens. The guy gets lost. But I think part of it was Gary Payton had no desire to learn it. You know, it was very strange going to those games a lot and watching him just float around and not know where to go. Um, I, I can imagine Tex and Phil were really frustrated, too. So um, that is the, the that is the uh, the basic pinch post for the strong side, uh, or sorry, to the reversal to the pinch post action itself. But I'm going to show you on the other side what happens, the secondary options. Because remember, one of the laws of a good offense from, from Tex was you need to be able to pass to any one of the four teammates at any time. And that doesn't happen in a lot of offenses. You know, Sometimes you're running a set and you're going to set three screens in a row. You know you're not getting the ball for a while. That sucks. I would never want to be that guy. That's why I don't like movers and blockers because movers and blockers dictates that two players in the offense are like always screeners. Every once in a while, they might be able to kind of cut and look for a post-up or something, but I don't know. That would be boring to me. Um, let me check in really quickly. Hey, Chicka Little Puff is out there moderating again. Always there. Always happy to see him. Um, I'm just going to qu- quickly check and see if we have any questions right now. Um, Max, uh, everything is going well. How's it going with you guys? Are we all following this so far? I feel like I should have let it run one more time. I'm going to let this play, and I won't say anything. I'll just let you watch it. And there you go. So let's now go back and from the beginning and look at what happens on the other side because that's the real key here as far as um, um, how you get pistol action. And it's been, again, b- baked in, built in. I, re- I remember now when I first got the, the, um, the, the book for the triangle offense and it was, you know, uh, pretty daunting. And it was a little bit like, you know, in- excuse me, intimidating and like filled with all sorts of diagrams and stuff. But after I coached it for a few years and really learned it, when I teach it now and write it out, I kind of always feel a little sheepish and say, like, that that's all it is. And in reality, it isn't that complicated. And it's really what the genius of Tex Winter is. He's boiled down a lot of the best actions that he saw in and around the game at that time in the 60s and put a flow to it, put a more of a spacing to it, took out some of the motion uh, guesswork that a lot of motion Bobby Knight style offenses have, where, where players are so confused because they don't know which way to go because they have too many options. And that's a problem. And you also have a lot of wasted action where you're doing all sorts of stuff like on the weak side that the guy with the ball will never be able to see because he's too busy scanning the other part of the floor. So Tex Winter really gave a uh, focus to this and it gave a, you know, a really uh, a perfect way to, um, to give order and structure and automatics to this. So uh, how are we doing? How's this looking? Um, now, 
Let's, let's go to that again. I'm going to go through now what's happening on the right side, on the right side of the floor. So, okay, first of all, we have the one to the three, and the one will now run to the corner. The problem with the, one of the problems with the triangle was the three would have to wait until the one gets all the way to the corner. It takes away any quick attack on the catch from the wing, and I know it kind of forces the offense to make a couple passes, which is what a lot of coaches want, but that was one big one that I, you had to get rid of in the triangle if you want to run you know, the pure triangle. That cut from the one that one makes, I'll show you right again, from the corner, from the guard spot to the corner, too, it takes too long. It's not worth it. So um, I, I, got, I got rid of that as I started to run this more, and, and I actually had the one just dribble to the wing and keep the three down low on the corner. Okay, so now the three can't hit, it, hit the five, so he passes the two on top, and that triggers the four. So every, every time the ball is released as a pass, that triggers the next action, the next movement. Not the catch, it's on the pass, on the release. That, it speeds it up a little bit. So, um, but watch what three does after he passes the ball. You see what he does? Three has now gone down to the corner. Now this is an, another automatic. So what we started, what I developed out of teach, teaching the triangle to the uh, to high school players was there were certain rules. And you know, at some point, the, the better you get at this, you can break rules, kind of like you know, you learn how to paint a still life before you do you know the Picasso. Um, but the rules really, really, really helped keep everything organized and balanced, and also flowing properly at the right timing. So one of the rules we had, and I think this is what Tech saw, was almost every offense run in back then in the 50s and 60s, when a guy threw the ball anywhere from the wing, he would cut down to the baseline to screen or to cut to the basket or some movement that way. So we saw the three start here and pass the ball to the top, and then he would cut down. And what he does here is he's going to set a screen right here, Okay. Now, that's, almost, that's an automatic. Whenever you throw the ball to the top, you're going to cut down to the baseline and most likely to set a screen. If there's nobody there, then don't worry about it. You can stay down there around the corner or whatever. But um, this is what um, – and by the way, Mama, 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 whatever you're asking, Mama 333, three, three, I did do videos for EGT. Absolutely. Great stuff. Um, so the one is going to do a, a, like a cut along the baseline and then wrap back around, right? And that's usually a really great way to get open because you can get your men underneath that screen better and you time it right and you come right back around. Now, this is where it's going to look. Here's the pistol part of it. Now, at this point, two has already thrown the ball to four and, and then cut around. Now, four is dribbling across the, uh, the lane here with the ball and one is flying out of the corner to get the handoff. And that's the really special sauce here because... You know, first of all, one has gotten a screen here at the baseline. Now he's running full speed into a catch on a handoff, which is basically a pick and roll at full speed. And now he's, he's going to learn how to catch that, that handoff and turn and get into the middle. And remember, middle penetration is the name of the game here. That's where you get all your threes. So you have a lot of options on what you can do out of this. Now, let me go to a blank screen because here's what we have now. We've got, um, we've got uh, one with the ball who's just turned the corner. And you know, into the lane to, to uh, attack. We've got two here spotting up, ready to go. Four has just handed off. So we have some options. The traditional triangle, he'd roll the basket, right? He'd, he'd go that way. But he can also pop out and get out of the way too. You can you can tweak these things. But we the only reason why we can't do that just yet is because we have um, the uh, one is coming. So this is one dr uh, driving. We have the three who would set the screen. Another part of his automatic route is after he's set the screen at the baseline, he's just going to pop back out toward the top. And you'll and the reason being is, that, let's say you know if he throws the ball to the two, and the two doesn't have a shot, well then all of a sudden we can get right back into our offense with a pass of the three. Now think about that: the three has already passed the ball, he's gone out on the baseline to screen, and now he's popped up up himself while all this other action is going on away from him. He could probably most likely be open off of that. Okay. And so that is the basic uh, notion of what the uh, what we have for the um, uh, of the pistol. So the pistol here would be um, four dribbling across, and one doing this and here for the handoff uh, off of the screen from three. Okay. So remember what pistol is. Pistol is a screen into a handoff. It could also be a handoff into ball screen, okay? Those are two different things, but they're the same sort of pistol action how I treat it. And so this is where we see a lot of that stuff where we see the a, a, a pin down into a handoff, and now it's basically like a double screen and the staggered in a row and you're off to the races. 
And that was built in automatically. So, you know, another way you can get this, by the way, oh, I didn't, I should have uh, diagrammed this, but I'll draw it out for you guys, is, okay, so the two has the ball on top, right? One is in the corner, three is here, five and four, okay? Now, four cuts up here, but if he's not open, okay, remember, three is still screening down here, okay? And one is coming up, two can be the dribble handoff here. And, and so now you're still in the same kind of action here. And then four would probably break out here for some more, uh, some more room. So do you see how that works? So you, you, you never, you're never out of it. You never, have a, you never get to a point where they've uh, you know, uh, denied a certain player and the whole offense falls apart. That's another issue with a lot of offenses that Tech had problems with was that um, as soon as you know, you, the, the team gets scouted on a play, they deny that first pass, and then all of a sudden the guy at the ball, hand, the ball handler just like has to give up. There's nothing else to do. He'll probably just call for a guy to come screen for him, and then they just go into a uh, pick and roll on top and hope for the best. This always flowed into something else where you're right back into the action, which is the genius of the triangle offense, and that was the pistol. Now, if you go back, and we're going to watch this one more time um, all the way through, uh, let's see here if you notice something interesting about a certain player, uh, one player on the court, which also makes this distinctly non-modern, a uh, little ancient. Uh, and by the way, James, this app is called, um, it's Lucio Sports. This is called Assist. And um, they make it available to a lot of high schools, depending on which um, federation you are in or what state. Uh, and, but a lot of colleges are signing up. A lot of NBA teams have this. So um, check it out, Lucio Sports. And uh, they might, you might be able to get it for free if you're in high school. Um, Let's see. Mello also mentioned that it's predictable in the modern game. Any opinions? So it, it's not predictable. I mean, it is predictable, but like so was the Green Bay Packers sweep, right? You could tell me everybody were running it and it wouldn't matter because you'd execute it better and you get a good shot. And the flow of this is what the key is. It's not just like I must throw the ball there. I must throw the ball there. It has to go there. No, you're allowed to. You can throw the ball to any of your four teammates. And with this flow, and there's also a mirroring effect where you can run the same action on the other side once it comes back around. Uh, you're never out of it. One pass and bam, you're right back into some sort of action that's an automatic built into the triangle. That's why it's not uh, predictable at all. Uh, but, I mean, I, I could see how Mello's point of view might feel that way because they never quite taught it properly, and he never got a chance to experience what, like, the 72 and 10 year, when you watch them run the triangle, it's a ballet, and they never ran the same thing twice. It was, it was really beautiful. Um, and so that's, those are the issues. And, again, an absence of text didn't help them putting it in. Uh, and then Derek Fisher, you know, he struggled to get it in. He was struggling just being a coach, it sounded like, uh, at the time, his first time. Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't recommend, you know, rookie coach, an NBA level, a bunch of, you know, tough veterans. Probably wouldn't have been the best situation for him to try and run the triangle there, I guess. Um, what I recommend is for a middle school offense. You know, I ran it with my, my freshmen, and I had certain years where the freshmen, um, the freshman team ran it better than the varsity. So, um, you know, if, if a freshman team can run it, an eighth grade team could run it for sure. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I would say, yeah, you could do it. Now, again, there's some tweaks I would do. That This is the pure version of it. So I now want to show you how we got uh, to the, 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 the modern pistol and see how it's changed. Because this is the, you'll recognize some things and you'll see some things and why it's different. Oh, well, actually, I, what I forgot to say is, let me go back to the first one. Does anybody know, I'm going to ask you right now, check the comments. Did anybody notice that there's, there's one player we haven't talked about at all in this whole setup, uh, in this whole option, option of the pinch post? Anyone know who it is? I might be behind by like a minute on the uh, thing. Ah, okay, not, not that far, only a couple of seconds. John, yes, all you guys are correct. The five, he doesn't move at all. And this is a big reason why it's a problem in the modern game. I get it. Back in the 50s and 60s, the five was a big 6'10", 6'11", dude. Um, although, here's the irony is the fives back then in the 70s actually had a lot of skills. And they had to do a lot of high post passing and dribbling, handoffs, all that kind of stuff. We kind of lost that at some point in the 80s. Um, but I could see why he'd want that guy to kind of just you know be around the basket, post up. Picture Shaq. Right, you only want Shaq to be from block to block, and you know maybe go to high post and back and forth a little bit in this area. You don't really want him necessarily to go other places. So I get it, but it's got a. It's boring. B. He's taking up all the space. This whole area has always got somebody there. How are you supposed to drive to get into the lane easy uh, when there's always like help there because he's not moving out of that position? And I actually developed some interesting ideas out of the triangle, the pure triangle, where. You know, I'd have him back screening a ton all the time. And that back screen to the wing, for instance, let's see if I can um, 
clean this up uh, here. Like if I had the five back screen the three, now the three is shuffle cutting out of there. Now the, then the five stays out. Now he's out and the, the basket area was cleaner. And actually, I had sent it over to Tex once one year, like, you know, 2002, whatever, and I swear they put it in or they used one of those cuts. Now, he probably designed that play in 1962, you know, and I just reminded him or something. But um, you can get the five out with those screens. Uh, and, by the way, there's also built-in ball screens, too. I mean, for instance, you can start with um, – Oh, let me go to a clean slide here. You know, the triangle offense has a high post, a whole high post series. Okay, so you can do this um, and uh, four, right? And so after he, this guy passes the ball here, he's going to do a UCLA cut off the five, and the five sets, sets an inside ball screen. This is the fourth quarter option uh, offense they ran for Michael Jordan all the time. And so think about that. It, when the two cuts through here, the five man, the five man's defender usually has to step a little bit just to make sure that guy isn't guarded. Well, now he's not in position to help guard this inside ball screen, and this this guy would be Michael Jordan, you know, blasting into the into the paint. Uh, and now you can have guys fanning out to the three point line and get open for shots. So um, it, it was really a modern offense that just didn't quite open it up as, as much as they could have. Um, so uh, let's see here. Any other questions before I go on? Uh, let's see. Uh, triangle offense is fundamentally about off ball movement and cutting. My, by modern mellow means he can't hog the ball and actually has to do work. I mean, yeah, it's about ball movement for sure. But obviously, you watch Michael Jordan exist in it, and he certainly was a guy who held the ball and did ISOs and all that stuff. But they would he'd get those ISOs after four or five passes, and now the defense can't gang up on him. That was the genius of that. So. Now let's talk about, so that was the biggest issue, again, was that the five just not really moving, not getting out of there, and the spacing was clogged. So the modern version of pistol, as we look at it, is you can basically, you know, sprint into positions on a numbers break. Now, if, do we all know numbers break? Um, let me see if I can do this uh, with a full court. Can I do it with a full court? What's this? Okay, can we all see this now? So numbers break would be, you know, your two would sprint to this corner, your three would sprint to this corner, your one would take a couple dribbles and then try and throw the ball from the backcourt as up as quickly as he could. Um, you know, the five would be rim running like to the strong side uh, block, and the four would kind of trail somewhere over here, right, and go to like the high post or something, right? Basic, simple, you know, whatever. But there's some, uh, there's a lot of validity to this. It's a great way to get passing lanes and a lot of gets good spacing against the defense and not let them just collapse, especially because that quick pass from here all the way up could be a three to the wing, right? But back in the day, it would have been a catch and then maybe try to attack the basket or something. But no, they're going to shoot threes now if they're open. So um, the new five is, I've kind of recreated that, if you can see here in the beginning with a numbers break, the two and the three are going to the corner. Now, I had the two kind of break right back up to the wing for a handoff, but uh, a lot of times he might not break all the way to the corner. He might kind of stop at the wing to begin with. Uh, I kind of put it in there, but you can you can you can eliminate a little extra. It's not running. It's just it might take too long for the two to get down to the corner and back out again. So here's what I'm going to play it. I'll let you guys see it real quick, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so relatively simple, right? Good spacing. You saw for the most part, uh, up in, uh, from, like, I would say well over half of this, uh, of this um, uh, action, you know, you have all this whole area open, okay? And there's also all sorts of chances for the two to, to get into here. The one now is opening, is moving up to here. The two could throw this pass for a three. The five dives. The five could pop out here. So you have a, a basically a five out setting, and it's much quicker. You can kind of, there's a lot less action, obviously, and you can get into it quicker, but that's how you can attack the, the pistol action right away, and that's what so many teams do now. And that's why the genius of this works so well. So let's walk through it real quick. Um... So we starts out where they filled, you know, we were filling the lanes. Now here, the key here is the five is trailing, and the four is running to the wing, and the three is running to the, the, the left side corner. So the two comes up. He's sorry, he comes out of the off the screen a little bit, but he'll come back on the court, and he goes right into a, ball, a, a, a handoff. Now remember, the one here could fake that handoff. We see Draymond do that really well, and um, who else? Probably like Blake Griffin does this well. But um, at any rate. Um, uh, I, that's, and that's my favorite play, the fake handoff, and then all of a sudden one just takes off and gets a layup, right? Look how open that is right now. Now, once one hands off the two, though, now two is coming off of this in the full sprint, 
you know, away from the basket. Five is coming over to set a ball screen for him and then rolling. So now the two has kind of gotten the catch into, uh, at full speed, turning the corner. And if he can get there, he's got either the four or the three helping the, their man. Let me uh, show you that. So, you know, invariably, if the two is turning the corner here off of that handoff into ball screen, then, you know, the guy guarding um, the three and the guy guarding the four, one of these guys is going to have to probably rotate over to help. Okay, now obviously you want the four to help one pass away. If he helps one pass away, easy, easy pass, easy shot, and you can run this at any age, sixth grade, fifth grade, whatever. Well, whatever, fifth, sixth grade, you could probably get them to do it. Um, you can put this in in a couple practices, and you can get them running it, and you get that shot. I'm telling you, uh, this is easy. And if the three helps, boom, you can throw the ball to the, uh, to the three in the corner. And now, if you teach your players how to attack on the catch, they can start breaking their men down. Let's say the three gets it in the corner, and the guy, the three, is now closing out. Um... Let's see, let's say the three was here. He was helping. Now he's going to close back out. The three can now, boom, break right back in and break his man down. And guess what? He'll have the one wide open for a shot, right? Or the one catches, uh, splits in the catch and goes, and he gets a drive, and he gets a layup. Or he hits, he hits four across his open. You know what I mean? You now get uh, attacking the offense or attacking, I'm sorry, the defense or attacking the um, closeouts. And remember, that's the name of the game here when we're talking about offense. The, the goal of an offense is middle penetration, and uh, attacking closeouts. Don't none of the triple threat stuff anymore. We don't want to give them all this time to like get back and do their stuttered jump stop, you know, closeouts. No, we want to split our feet and go, or catch the ball and shoot it. Um, what is the fours role? The fours spots up at that point. Now you can have fun with the four if you want to on this one. Let's go back to here. So what you can do here is the four can come over and, and set a, a, another ball screen. Okay, the four could, uh, as the two is dribbling toward him, let's delete that. Um, as the two is dribbling towards him, the four could cut back door. The three can come up here. This is a bit of a Princeton offense uh, feel to it, where what's going to happen is X3, if the, if the four cuts back door, probably has to step over here to help even for a couple steps. And that means that three comes up and he would be open for the, for the shot. Now, on that weak side, because again, it is a little bit boring if you are the three or the four. You, it could be because all you do is stand there. So they have some options too, and you can teach this as an organic thing. You can give them four things they want to do. They could stay the way they are. They could exchange. Four could move down. Oh, let me, let me write this. Let me do this. Four can move down to the three, and three can just move up to there. They can switch spots, or they can screen one for the other. Okay, you can either do, by the way, imagine this. Imagine, um, this is where it's fun. Uh, two is coming down the lane here, and then three does a hammer screen for four. Imagine that. Boom. Why? I guarantee you that would be open. No problem. Now you can flip that and have four screen for the three, and you know you, you get a lot of fun there. Let me, let me clear this. You can have four. Set, oh, my goodness gracious. Four. Four. Set a screen for three. Now, three could be open, but what I'm, who's, who's on my page, on my, my wavelength here? Don't forget, on a weak side screen or off ball screen, the most important person, the most dangerous person is a, is the, let's see. On an off ball screen of a, for a cutter, who's the most dangerous person in that action? Right here. Who is the answer? I'm looking at the comments. Are we still on? Are we live? Where is everybody? Hello, hello. The screener, that's right. <laughs> the screener is the most dangerous person. So the four sets a screen. His man's going to be staring around at three, what a three is doing, and he goes boop, back door, and two goes boop, right there, throws it to him, and he gets a layup. So that's really where you get some exciting stuff. And again, you can break these things down into two-line drills and three-line drills with no defense to begin with if you want to get it going. But then I really encourage you to get defense going live as quickly as you can but that's where it gets to be fun and that's where it gets to be like okay depending on what kind of player you are you know what three might uh be a not be a great shooter right and if four comes down here to screen maybe three could take a step up and he cuts this way and then four pops back out because he is a shooter and he can get the ball so now you have a lot of interesting things you can make this into a weave two comes over here right four can come this way and get the get the weave right back and guess what one can come back here. Now you got to weave across the top. That's the that's a right out of Tex Winner's offense. There's a lot of options for the pinch post where you get a weave going. And in fact, that's what you can do here. I'll show you that real quick. You want to see it? So you, can you remember the pinch post? 
So let me go back to the pinch post. Let me go half court. So with pinch post, we have the two here, we have the four here, and he throws it, right? And he follows his pass. Well, four is going to dribble here. One does this and gets it, gets it out of here. And then um, what happens on this one is, wait, oh my goodness, am I forgetting how we do this? Oh, never mind. Yeah, you know what? It's been that long. Here's what it is. Let me, um, let me delete this. Okay, here's what happens. Um, I forgot. So what happens is if two can't throw it to four, then he starts to dribble back to this way to the one, and the one comes up and gets it, and then the one can keep dribbling, and then he hands it out to the four who gets the ball back. Steve Curry used to run this in the triangle all the time for wide-open shots. Um, I think there was one more catch out of this. So who was getting it? Let's see. One, two, whatever, the three. Oh, it was the three. So Kerr would be the guy who was setting a screen here, and then he'd be coming out for that last, that fourth handoff in, the, in, a, in a weave. Uh, and he'd be wide open. It would be not even a joke. It would be a joke how open he was. Now, sometimes it's hard to say, okay, organically, we're just going to get that. So you'd call that play, okay? You know, a lot of times in the NBA, at the very least, like if you have the ball here on the wing, you know, you can make this pass back to the top. Now, I know a lot of times in the high school level, they'll deny that in college, and it's not as easy. Two's got to work really hard to get that ball. Um, there are other options, by the way. Really quickly, what you, you almost want the two to be denied here because that means his man is way up high because the, the, the next option out of that would be the four blazes the path right there and three... Three throws the ball here. Now, do we all know what this action's called? Anybody? The three throws the ball to um, the uh, to the four who flashed across. Anyone? Anyone know what this action's going to be? Yes, uh, you guys. I've learned very well. Sean has got it. The blind pig, and it's blind pig because the X two. Let me make this cleaner here. Okay, uh, the guy guarding the two is so high up and so focused on denying that. Two cuts back door right behind the four, and the four hands it off to him. And it's a blind pick. It's blind. They, they never were. They, they never. They don't know what hit him. So X four is you know is here. He's not in position. Two is going full speed. And if he if he somehow gets over there to stop it, well then the four goes back. You know rolls with it. Wide open shot guaranteed. You know. And if not, you know the one is here. X one is going to have to help over there. And uh, then he can kick it to the corner for a three. So you can see why the spacing was built in for the triangle right there at every, every, every pass. Um, that's why it works so well for, um, for, the, for, that's why it works so well. But you had to know how to teach it properly. So any questions so far? Do we follow that? Can we see how this sort of, uh, this is how we, the, the, it, it evolved and developed? Now, Mike D'Antoni was playing this kind of offense, you know, in Europe when he was a star in Italy. And primarily because Tex would go over there every year. And Pete Newell would go over there every year to teach the game because they were the ones who, like, you know, invented it. Pete Newell practically invented the game. So the, um, you had guys, you know, the, the Italians and the Europeans were all absorbing all this information. And that's when they were like, oh, let's use that piece there and that piece there. And they, they, they evolved their own version of it. Um, and that's how we got the pistol from there. Now, so, so, so D'Antoni needs to thank Tex because I'm not sure he's aware. He might be that that's where the origins of it were. Now, that said, Tex took it from Sam Barry, his coach in the USC in the 40s. Uh, Sam Barry ran the triple post offense, which is basically the triangle, although I'm still trying to find like some real hard diagrams of the offense to see if there's any significant, di significant differences between triple post and the triangle. But all that stuff was, um, was, breaking down, was broken down that way um, and built that way up. And again, when you, when you watch like a, a motion offense coach try and teach this, like I've seen better basketball do that with uh, the read and react. Um, I get confused because it's so many options, and I'm wondering well, what the heck. Like, how are you supposed to know when to do this and when to go there, when not to go there? Why go there? And as a high school player, my coach tried to do that our senior year, put this you know uh, kind of a read and react offense, ever having never had one before, and we couldn't figure it out. He finally just had to go to a more rote like you go there, you go there, you pass there. We were really good, so we didn't. All we needed was some more structure. But when the triangle offense comes out, and, and they put the structure to the motion. Uh, you know, we all heard, you know, pass and pick away for motion offense. It's like the, the guiding principle. That exists basically in the triangle, too. Every time you make a pass, you're going to cut somewhere for sure. And usually it is to screen. And usually it's to screen away. Um, so it's already built in. It just gives you more structure and more focus. 
Um, all right, let's go to some questions here because that's my presentation. Um, let's see here. What's the thing he uses called? Okay, this is called, this is called Assist by Lucio Sports. Go check them out. Um, they're awesome. I'll, I'll probably pin the comment when I'm done with this uh, with a link so you can check it out. Go to episode one from last Wednesday. I believe that there is a link in that one too. Uh, I, I need to remember to do that. Um, and if you, so a lot of high school coaches might have access to this for free, uh, they've already made deals with a lot of different federations across the states, uh, across the United States. Um, and the, yes, there's a video or two of me explaining the triangle offense on court. So you can check those out too. Those are really good. Uh, just search b-ball breakdown and, um, and triangle offense. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm just trying to see, okay, would I ever take a division one coaching job? Uh, interesting. Would I go to college? Um, I don't know. Maybe. Um, maybe. It, uh, there's so many rules and regulations about how much uh, access you get to the players and how much you can train. And, and I don't know. I don't know if I would do that um, necessarily. But uh, maybe. Uh, how did the Oklahoma City Thunder make the playoffs? I've been studying the film. It doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Uh, they had a really great team. They had a great three-guard lineup. And Chris Paul is going to make you good no matter what. He's going to get just manufacture great shots out of nothing. Uh, Danilo Gallinari is really good, and he had a really good year. Um, you know, Stephen Adams is is a really underrated center, criminally underrated. So, you know, Billy, Billy Donovan's a good coach. I mean, there's a lot of things there that made sense to me. <laughs> um, let's see here. So it's a one. Yeah, you're right. It's one thing to watch a bunch of videos, and it's another thing. Uh, Andras uh, is correct and want to learn it systematically. Um, and you're right because it's like, where do you begin? And I mentioned earlier, I'm, I'm a part method. Uh, guy, so I would do you know two line drills. So basically, uh, to show you this, I would I would go um, to teach the pistol, for instance. I'd have one line uh, at, at half court here, um, here, and I'd have another line you know in the corner. Let's just say, and then you know everyone's waiting to go on. You know they're standing here, and the other guys are standing over here or whatever. And literally just start with the ball, dribble, 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 come on the handoff, give the ball there, and then you know turn the corner and shoot it turn the corner and uh, pass it to the handoff uh, rolling. Um, you know, maybe maybe you can even do this uh, as a more advanced, is once the guy uh, dribbles the ball and one gets the handoff, he can cross back over. Oh, my goodness, my I'm getting a pen for next week. Uh, he, he dribbles the ball, hands off, and then he can turn around and then set a ball screen. So one comes over here and then breaks back down. It's a little two-man game. So you build from there. And, um, and then you keep adding players and you keep adding uh, options from that. But then the key here is to add defense live. Don't, don't, don't worry if it looks messy. Um, you need to have that. That's how they rapidly learn, uh, much more rapidly than, than doing the, the, the two on zero, three on zero. Um, so that's why, and that's why I like doing the part method first. Part method the whole. So you build it up slowly. Um, even if it takes you know, a, a, a little bit longer, it's much more worth it when you see the light bulb go off, when they realize how it all fits together later at the end. Um, let's see who has the cutest face in the NBA today. I don't know. Is that, isn't that like Rubio? Uh, why is it called the pistol? You know, it's a really great question. Why it's called pistol. I, I, I was kind of thinking it's because of pistol Pete, but, um, I don't know. I need to find that out. It's a good question. I was also thinking there might be some notion of there's like a, the shape of this, like, like, you know, is there some way that the movement this way and then this way, it makes it look like a gun, you know, uh, an upside down gun. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm getting a little, uh, you know, uh, I think I'm, I'm pushing it there, but you never know. Um, search in the Encore Demonstrations play. There you go. Um, how long have I been doing this, Coach? Well, I've been doing B-Ball Breakdown for over 10 years, which is insane. Uh, that it's you know that I can be doing this this long, uh, and that we have a platform like YouTube that allows me to do it, and then the NBA you know is, is nice enough to to, be, to allow, allow their footage on YouTube. So uh, it's been ten years. I was I was coaching at the same time for the first like three, uh, and now I've been doing this just only people I'll break down for like the last seven. But, but it's crazy because it's like people who you know there was like thirteen year olds who are now you know adults who are who were watching it when they when I started. Um, I started watching, let's see, Captain Skulls. Oh, coach, how can you reset, reset the triangle if the fir, 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 first few options don't work? Well, the key with the triangle is you're, you're only one pass away from getting right back into it. So, let, I mean, if the ball was here, right, and let's just say you had, you know, I'm, I'm going to put the numbers here instead. 
let's see here. So let's say the one has the ball here, and let's let's just make it a little bit messy here. Four is here. I don't know. Two is there. Um, let's see where we should put the three. Let's put the three here. I don't know. Okay, so it's kind of messy. We we lost track of what the offense was. Well, it's real simple. Um, you know, one cut here, and then one pass, and boom! Look what we have. You have. Um, you now have the two with the ball here. Um, you have the one, and now here's a triangle. Boom! We're right back in the triangle. Let me erase this guy. Okay. Oh well, and then um, the four. You know, boom. There. So now you're right back in the base triangle. You can try and pass to the center. You can try and pass to the four. You can try, uh, maybe the five cuts across. You can throw here, or the, the fourth option is to the corner. So in reality, it's not that complicated. You're always looking to get a pass either from the wing to the corner, a wing to the top, a wing to the low post, or a wing to the, to the free throw line. And out of that, again, if you get lost, you know, and you, and you don't have anything uh, going on, the ball's here, you know, the guy's over here, and there's a guy here, and a guy here, and let's say, you know, I don't know, three. You know, when in doubt, dribble handoff is what I always say. You know, you get stuck here, start to dribble across, four gets around, comes and gets that shot, you know, five can come up here. Now, if four has the ball, he throws the ball here. Guess what that is? That's pinch post. So he now follows his pass, goes to the corner, okay? Five can hand off to him or not, or he can start dribbling. You know, one comes out of the corner. So you, you have these automatics, and that's why you always find yourself right back into the position. So if the ball is up on top, you know, and there's a guy over here, well, you know, he, the automatic. Cut to the pinch post, throw the ball to him. You know, follow the pass around. So one of my other rules would always be if I cut to the basket from – this is a good one. If I cut to the basket uh, from the top, um, I go to the weak side corner. Always. Always. Rule. It always keeps you, you know, grounded. keeps you uh, uh, with a purpose. And if I cut to the basket from the wing, like this, I go to the weak side corner. Okay? And if I cut to the basket from the corner, guess what? I go to the wing. That's it. You, you put those rules in and on the top as well. And uh, you, the offense begins to form around itself. It's really amazing. And you, don't, and you don't lose anything. Now, the key here is the attention to details and teaching it right. So I would spend a lot of time like, whoa, hang on. Wait, we're only, look at where we are. And I know it looks like we're lost. Just cut there, one pass, and we're right back in it. And then they get it after enough time. Um, and that's the cool thing about this. Let's see here. Um, what should I focus on when I'm studying games such as high school, college, NBA? I mean, listen, if you're studying film, what, you know, there's so much to focus on, I guess. If you're talking about offense only, then certainly you know, what I'm looking at is what, what's the weak side uh, action doing? What's the balance of the floor? The spacing is proper. Like, what are they running, basically? Right? Are they doing a UCLA cut? Are they doing a motion offense? You know, and then you can start to realize, well, are they executing it right? Are they setting good screens? Are they timing their cuts properly? Are they too early? Are they too late? Um, are they running just ball screen stuff? You know what I mean? Is there wasted action? So that, that's what I really kind of look at in a matrixy way as I'm watching the whole thing. Uh, I actually probably don't watch the ball very much, uh, ultimately. You know, I'm always looking at where things are going and what uh, the rest of the play is, is, uh, is, is playing out. So the ball doesn't end up being like the focus of my mind a lot of the time. Um, can you talk about motion offense? Well, I mean, I guess I could. I, I used to know Bobby's, Bobby Knight's, you know, the, the traditional motion offense pretty well and I'm kind of forgetting because he had rules too um, but a lot of it in my mind for the Bobby Knight stuff was um, it was it was symmetrical so you'd have like a guy setting a pin down and a guy doing this on both sides and so you, your point guard you know oh boy that was oh, whatever your point guard would, would need to be like a rabbit and have eyeballs on both sides of his head to see this you know at the same time was going on um, you know, I do like some of it, but a lot of it was, uh, his motion offense was predicated on the, on the catch. Like you don't move until the catch. Whereas Tex was like, as soon as the ball is out of your hand to the position, that's triggering you to start moving. And there was a better way to run your offense because you're a little bit, you're ahead of the defense quicker that way. Um, but it just, it just to me would be like hard to figure out in a strict read and react, uh, free form thing. And, and, and most try, most, uh, motion offenses, uh, coaches I know were like screamers. They were like Bobby Knight, probably because it might seem so clear to them how the offense is supposed to run. But when the, when the players don't do it exactly the way you want to, like you just freak out and start yelling, which makes it infinitely worse. There's without question. 
Um, and so, uh, so that's why I don't like the motion. But I can tell you that the triangle offense, all that motion is in a, a, you know, the Bobby Knight's motion offense. It's just not as, it's, there's not automatics built in the way Tex taught it. So that's why it works so much better. Um, use modified version of triangle offense for third and fourth grade girls. Oh, that's great. Uh, won a championship, just simplified the actions, dribble entry into the triangle. Perfect. Warren Nickel. Okay. When I was teaching the, the triangle in the, in 2010, that's my first team. We had the hardest time. My, my, my point guard wasn't great. He didn't handle the ball that great. Uh, sorry, Chris, if you're out there, but he was, he knows this. We had the hardest time making this pass to the, to the, to the wing. And that obviously, if you don't make that pass, the offense couldn't start. It was like the hardest thing. So, a few ten games in the season, I'm like you know what, just dribble over there. Make, make if you dribble over here instead. When and and obviously, what what happens is is the trigger is once the three sees him dribbling toward him, he just cuts to the corner and takes what one spot where we, one would have been after passing. So now what you'd have is you know then you now you have the triangle and the five here and the one is here with the ball three is in the corner now you, now you have a triangle easy and I, I'm glad that Warren you brought that up because again it's a simple fix and I was I was forced to figure that out because I couldn't get him to make that pass now the other thing you can do out of this by the way if one's got the ball and you have two here and he's having a lot of trouble you can dribble handoff. And most levels, if you dribble handoff, you should be able to get the handoff part because it's a backwards pass. It's a safer pass. Now the three can start to go attack and do all sorts of stuff. Or he can, he can pass to the two, and the two can maybe go to the four on this side, right? Suddenly, when you get this action here in the handoff, the uh, four might start to move over a little bit. And if you quickly go to the four, you, now you have the pass. Two goes to the, two, you know, to the corner. Five would go like this across. And then you're going to have a triangle set up that way, if you can follow that. And another reason why the triangle works so well, it's, it's symmetrical. It, it, it flows from side to side. Um, and that was always so exciting to watch the, the Bulls and the Lakers do that when they would reverse it and then bam, right, like they do the first option to the center and they'd swing it and they go boom right back into the center again. But guess what? It's not the same center because everyone is positionless and they all play different positions. Um, so let's see here. Varun, can you explain how to defend this action? All right. Oh my goodness. I forgot to tell you. That, yeah, I finally broke 800,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. I can still remember... Uh, when I got this, check this out. I still remember the day when this came. Uh, you know, you know. Let me. I'll show you this in the in the big. Here we go. Hang on. Um, check this out. This was for a hundred thousand, um, and this is the silver, right? So that silver play button. So thank you guys so much for being part of the conversation for so long and being such a big part of it. Um, blown away. And you know what? I want to get to a million. Let's get to a million a lot faster than I got to 800,000. What do you say? But um, again, uh, I, I, I'm so thankful for you guys to be part of this. It's been an amazing journey. Uh, and I'm so excited that you guys can be part of this. And, and just even this private little conversation we're having now. Um, let's see here. So how do you defend this action? I mean, it's not easy because the handoff part is hard. And especially if you're going to set a pin down first, um, the defense is usually behind. And that's why it works so well, the pistol part of it. Um, so if I were, you know, let's see here. You know what? I'm not sure. Have I ever really thought about what I would want to do? I would probably, you know, if I was going to try and defend uh, this action here, you know, and let's say there's a, a, a screen. I'm just going to switch the numbers here. But if two is coming here. You know, I'd probably say, okay, um, I'd say, you know, go under this. So who's ever guarding the one kind of, you know, goes under and gives us gives a, a lane here and let X2, who's trailing, go underneath the handoff and just contain. Now, you're giving up a three on a catch off of the handoff. Not an easy shot, but uh, dare him to make that first. So if you, to follow that, let me, let me clean this up a little bit. If, um, let's see if I can do this. If X, oh, my goodness. If X2 is going to, you know, 2 is coming up for the handoff, X2 would go through this lane underneath and meet him on this side, you know. Now, the other thing, obviously, is a switch. So you switch everything. So if 1 is coming up and is going to hand off to 2 uh, on the outside here, to switch. So X1 will jump out to there, and X2 will just take 1. And that's probably the best way to do it. I'd say switch it. And, uh, and you should be okay. But again, switching kind of leaves you vulnerable to uh, the one can hand off and break you know, quickly there. Two can hit him on, on that. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways to happen. Or uh, sometimes even on the switch, oh, you know, one could fake the handoff, right? 
and if they try and switch this, they're dead, right? They switch, and he shows the ball, and like not like a carry, but he shows the ball a little bit like a handoff, and then throws the ball and goes. Uh, if X1 is going like this to switch, and X2 is kind of waiting to switch there, boom, he gets right there. So that's another way to combat that. But switching, I think, would probably be the best way. So good question. Um, let's see here. Chin action can easily flow right. In. Oh, there, oh, by the way, so chin action is out of the out of the um, Princeton offense, and they're they're cousins. They're kissing cousins. The biggest difference between the Princeton and the um, and the triangle is basically, you know, you can play low post with the Princeton. Although a lot of times the five will be on the high post as well. Is that when the one throws the ball here in the triangle, he'll go to this corner, the strong side corner. In Princeton, he goes to the weak side. That's like one of the biggest differences, really, uh, at that point when you're talking about uh, Princeton versus Triangle. Now, the five ends up moving up to the high post a lot more, and that's, you know, a little bit, uh, again, the difference which is maybe better because it opens the basket area better. Um, but that's a lot of, like, the basic difference. Other than that, there's so much of this similar. And we did Princeton, too, and they, and they do flow into each other. By the way, Horns flows right in the, into the Triangle offense beautifully. Like, it was amazing when we run that, and then if Horns didn't produce a shot right away, uh, we'd be right back on our offense um let's see here ngd my pleasure i'm glad that you guys can be here uh well you know what we're almost at an hour let's just see i'll, I'll wrap this up here with a couple more questions do you personally have an upgraded version of the offense with the best of each coach an upgraded version of the offense with the best of each coach what does that mean i'm not sure what you mean explain that for me how about switching there you go alex you got it coach doing his thing awesome uh, if a team is hard switching on every action, you can slip a screen just when they're trying to switch. That's what I just described, absolutely. Or fake handoff kills them. I love it. Um, and then slipping, when he says, is before you actually make contact with the screen, you cut out of there. Um, now, I would almost say that most of the time, the slipping works because you did set a screen for a couple times, right? You got to kind of establish it a little bit, I would imagine, to begin with. But we're seeing a lot of college teams. See, the college teams still are, are, are always behind. They're always years and years behind. So like in a pick and roll, for instance... When the one has the ball and he's coming um, off of a you know a ball screen here, five x five the guy guarding five will hedge. Okay, so let's say one is there, x five comes up to like up here, okay, and you know one is dribbling this way. Well, it puts him out of position so often that if five slips the screen before that, before he even makes contact with with x one. You know, so let's clean this up for a second. Five looks like he's about to um, to uh, set the screen, right? He's coming up this way, but just before he gets, you know, five, six feet away, boom, he cuts there. Five X will have already been up here trying to hedge, right? He's way out of position. There's no help. Uh, there could be help, but it'd be way late. Maybe there's a guy here, you know, so X4 would have to come over, but now you're, gonna, now you're talking about, you know, a quick pass to the four for a three. You have a lot of options that way. And, uh, and so we're seeing college teams slip that ball screen all the time now without even setting up a ball screen to begin with uh, because they just keep hedging, keep hedging. There's no uh, adjustments. Why they don't drop, uh, you know, the, 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 the basic way for um, NBA teams to guard uh, the pick and roll now, if the five comes up and sets a screen here, the X5 drops. Uh, he comes around here, and X5 is going to dare him to shoot anywhere in the mid-range here, while X1 is chasing around to stop him from getting that three-point shot. Uh, he'll fly by. Oh, my goodness, everyone. Thank you so much. Again, you're, I, it's amazing how often you're there to be a friend of the breakdown and a super chatter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and, and, you know, oh, we're launching a membership, so we're going to get all these interesting emojis, I think, for everybody, right, when they join. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to come up with a good announcement for that soon. Um, what's my go-to triangle offense action? I would say the blind pig is my favorite, uh, but pinch post might be the most, uh, the most lethal. But the blind pig, you know, ball's here. Um, the guy flashes, throws the ball in the middle, and the two breaks back door. A lot of stuff happens out of that you can get. I love it. It's my favorite. Uh, it's really clever. Um, let's see here. What's the next evolution of the NBA after the current three-point shooting era? Has the game peaked under the current rules? What rule changes do you see happening for the game to evolve? Um, you know, okay, great question to end with. So I think that the evolution now as we're moving along for three-point shooting is that, you know, we'll just have more and more great shooters on the floor together. So, you know, this year, next year, soon, we're going to have five players all playing the different positions who can shoot 40% or higher from three. And you can imagine what that would look like. You know, you're going to try and generate a lot of threes that way. 
but you'll have so much space because you can't help off. You can't, you know, you can't help on the weak side as much. So that's probably one way. And that will change the, I think the game will really not resemble what we've seen, you know, from even 10 years ago. So that's what I think it's going. So rule changes, you know, the, the three, you know, maybe, maybe making the court wider so the three point line in the corner is a little bit farther away. But I don't think that the corner, the three point shot in the corner closer is why they make more of them. I think they make more of them because they're all catch and shoot. And if you get the ball there in the corner, you're probably open. But this, the act of throwing the ball there generally means it's because the defense is rotated off and you're open. So that's why those shots. So it doesn't necessarily matter that it's closer. So I don't know if that's like the solution to make it a little bit farther because, again, it's going to be that open shot. Uh, in fact, making it wider just makes it even harder on the defenses. So you'll probably see even more scoring because they can really just spread you out farther. Um, you know, making the, the three-point line farther back just benefits Steph Curry more, which I'm not sure he needs any more benefit from the rules. Um, you know, maybe you can raise the basket. I mean, you know, I don't know. That, that's always pretty radical to me. I don't think that would that would be ideal. Um, so I think, but but if they end up getting more and more teams that can get five players at a time that are forty percent three point shooters or higher, that's when you're going to probably see a peak. You know, and like it's going to level off. It's not going to be much you can do at that point. Um, other than that, I don't know what else we would see. There's going to probably be some rule changes I would like to see maybe defensively to maybe help the defense, but I would also like to see them maybe getting rid of some of these charges where you're sliding up underneath guys. Um, the college game, they can't call these, game, these those calls right. They can never get it right. It's really frustrating. Pros are better at it and getting that call right, but it's dangerous. And um, I like being able to take a charge if I'm guarding the guy. And, um, you know, coming over, it's, you know, listen, I'm also sympathetic to defense because I want to be able to have ways to stop the offense because they're, they're so easy to score these days. But uh, I've always been worried about that, the bridging one where you get underneath somebody and you flip them over their head. Um, it just seems too dangerous for me for that one. Okay. Um, yeah, Michael Brown. Okay, last question. Uh, what do I, what's my opinion on European style five out motion offense? I mean, I love it because it's all, it's read and react and you're seeing, you're trying to attack the defense just like you would, you know, with any other kind of offense. Um, and it's, I think it's principled on shooting. It's the fact that, you know, the, the centers can shoot. Um, uh, and now that they've dribbling better, remember the Europeans back in the day didn't dribble so well. So you could really pressure them in those international games and they would melt. They couldn't get the ball to the court. They couldn't get good shots. Now their dribbling is better than we have, or it's awesome. They can handle that kind of pressure. So suddenly now they can run their offenses even better. Um, and that's the best way to do it. I, I agree. I want the basket area open as much as possible. Now, I also do like the old school post-ups and there's a lot of value to those shots. Um, and uh, we've lost some of that footwork. We've lost some of the skill down there, which is why it isn't as efficient as it should be. But um, I do feel like the majority of uh, possessions that I would want to coach would probably have a, a, a only a high post, you know, and have the low post open so you have more opportunities for the other four guys to, to attack the basket and get threes and stuff and layups. So, um, but th I, I love what they're doing. I, and the European game's always been really much more in interesting and creative. And when you watch those games, you can take a lot of great stuff and actions that people haven't seen here um, just because they're, they're international and they have a different view of the game. So anyhow, well, thank you guys so much for joining us for the hour show. We'll be back again next Wednesday, right? Why not? Uh, with some more. So if you have any suggestions, throw them in the comments, uh, tweet me, uh, and let me know what you want me to see broken down because I'm always open for really great. I want to know what you guys want to see. And let, hey, let me know if you like this. If this, if this is worthwhile and you enjoyed staying with me and, uh, and watching this. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Um, so let me know. Thank you guys. Thank you, Michael. Great question. Uh, everybody else, Varun, another thank you again for being so generous. Um, don't, don't miss, I'm going to launch this membership and it's going to be a lot of like, you know, live shows like this, uh, where we can have a lot more interaction. I could probably bring guests on who are going to give any more insights into the teams. It'll be more of an NBA, you know, it'll be all NBA stuff like I do normally, but, uh, like in this format. Um, so thank you so much. Yeah. Help me get some more followers and more subscribers. I love it. That'd be awesome. Um, and, uh, I don't know. I think that's about it. Again, thank you so much. You guys are all amazing. And, um, don't forget sports fans at B-Ball Breakdown. We're not a channel. We're a conversation. You win. <laughs>